Um, the spaces in Azerbaijan are really closing since many years. Uh, and Azerbaijan is moving toward, be, to, towards becoming more and more closed society. Uh, many people were very um, pessimistic when they were uh, hearing about the Maidan TV projects that were launched three years ago and they were saying that um, it's impossible, it's, uh, in a country like this it's impossible to do any sort of uh, independent journalism project or human rights defending. Mm -hmm. um, but we insisted that it is possible, it's just you need to change the tactics and you need to apply certain methods uh, that will make it possible. So it's basically a mix of uh, underground work inside of the country with legal work outside of the country. And I think by now we can say that uh, we are successful. Yesterday uh, in Washington Post there was editorial article uh, advising President Aliyev to watch Made on TV so he understands more what kind of values a nation needs to succeed in modern, to succeed in modern age. Uh, of course, um, release of uh, political prisoners, of some political prisoners, was a very positive step, but that doesn't solve the problem. Uh, it is exactly the problem that this government trades with human rights. They are jailing political prisoners and then releasing some, uh, and then they are uh, jailing other uh, activists, journalists, uh, politicians. Um, we have now, for example, a criminal case against Made on TV, and 15 of our journalists inside and outside of the country are uh, basically under criminal investigation. Uh, and potentially, um, they can be jailed. Uh, so uh, we have more uh, prominent political prisoners in jail. They are not released. So despite of the positive step that came from the government recently, we cannot say that the problem has been solved. Mm -hmm. um, we are both inside and outside. And uh, I can speak now about journalism and independent journalism. Uh, so we are living in a digital age, uh, but we also have a lot of people, citizens in Azerbaijan, who are sending us videos. And we have professional journalists outside of Azerbaijan who are working on this information that are sent by ordinary citizens. And we're producing content that is very popular. So made on TV from a very small, media outlet three years ago became uh, one of the most popular online uh, uh, media outlets. So we are on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on website of course, we also uh, present our materials on Twitter and uh, we have hundreds of thousands of people in nine million countries who are watching our content. And topics that we are raising, these are exactly the topics that the mainstream pro-government media doesn't raise. It's human rights violations, uh, it's uh, different narratives when it comes to the conflict with Armenia. Uh, it is um, all those topics that usually um, are not even covered or covered with uh, pro-government uh, propaganda touch. I understand the real politic concerns of uh, German government or of EU Commission when it comes to dealing with countries like Azerbaijan or Turkey or Russia. Um, and I think here I have two uh, options for them to act. I think ideal option is when uh, the governments of these countries uh, would finally realize that if they don't support uh, actively uh, people who inside of those countries want to change those countries and make them really democratic and free, then the problems that those countries have, they will travel to Europe, to Berlin, to Brussels. And, um, and that's unfortunately not understood uh, in, in European capitals to the degrees that I would wish uh, they would understand. So ideally, in my view, of course, it should be very proactive foreign policy, supporting uh, various groups, uh, media, activists, uh, you know, 
political education so we can uh, support all those dissidents that brought actual change, for example, in Eastern Europe by the end of 80s. Uh, but again, this is ideal option, right? Uh, but we're dealing with realities and, and certain conservatism that is just part of foreign policy right now. So I think if that is not an option, then the second uh, option could be uh, maybe indirectly supporting those forces in those countries without directly saying so. And there are many ways to do this. Uh, and uh, you just need to be creative and more sophisticated about it. Because at the end of the day, unfortunately, in our countries, uh, democratic change, freedom of speech, human rights, this is underground work. It's not legal work. It's a crime. Journalism is a crime in Azerbaijan. So um, you cannot openly support something that is considered to be a crime, but you can find the ways to support those media outlets or human rights activists uh, via other, let's say, organizations or foundations or groups that have no direct link to, let's say, EU Commission or German government. And I think, I hope that the second option at least will be the possibilities that can be applied so you basically don't destroy your relations with these countries, but at the end of the day help really those groups that are bringing the real change in those countries.